rock and stone people and if that don't make sense then don't worry your sweet little head about it because all will become clear as Reggie takes you through Deep Rock Galactic, a game that takes the honour in 2022 as the best game you've never played. And my dear Cockney gang, don't be fooled by the artistic direction and presume it's a game for wanking Fortnite kids. Oh no young Padawans because there is far more to it than that. So warm up your credit cards as Reggie explains why you need to spend the equivalent money of just two cheap beers and treat yourself to the wonder that is Deep Rock Galactic. Welcome back one and all and Reggie and the boys want to thank you dearly for smashing through the 500 subscriber mark is absolutely blown us boys away and we are forever grateful to the gang that is you lovely people. So Reggie here has powered through 10 hours into Deep Rock Galactic and I've only had it for two days all whilst trying to manage a truce with Frank the Manx boys so that tells you something that tells you just how captivating this incredible game is and mark my words because this channel will always promise you honesty even if it means riling up some lovely little fanboys along the way because simply this you deserve honesty in a world full of marketing bullshit and if you go back through my reviews you'll see how critical I am of many games but this one I'm really struggling to find too many faults with it so instead it's going to be one big cockney gamer gang orgy of praise. Now Deep Rock Galactic is an always online first person shooter game where you get to select little dwarfs from four classes, each class having its own unique skill. You are then launched into the deep depths of an asteroid where your goal is to mine minerals whilst fending off a load of alien bugs. Once achieved you then have a set time limit to escape back to your pod. It really is that simple and again, if you're hearing this and thinking, sorry Reggie lad, I can't be arsed with all that class bullshit and playing with random twats is not really my thing, then fear not people because what you get here is truly unlike any other online game that I've played before. Now as you know, I'm a pathetic muppet with very few friends to play with other than myself. And so I started out in the single player portion of the game and it's incredibly well done. You see you'll get a little drone companion that can in essence take the role of multiple people. And so you'll get to utilise that drone to help you battle the hordes of aliens or mine hard to reach minerals. And before long you'll complete the various missions on offer in no time at all. And you'll be fine people and have a jolly good old laugh doing it. But as part of this review I forced myself to go into the cesspit that is public online gaming and holy shit people it really is a joy I played countless games and I didn't have any clowns screaming in their mics in fact it was silent and get this people just worked together people just got on with their tasks and when I died countless times these random dwarfs did everything in their power to get me up that's what she said and when they did they would have their dwarf shout rock and stone as if to encourage me and it dawned on me there is a sort of weird camaraderie involved in this community that few other games possess and thanks to the simplicity of the game, when I entered the random public group, I almost knew immediately what I was doing. And where I was as lost as Amber Heard's lawyers, I just watched and observed and understood the task pretty quickly. What incredible game design. And what makes it so accessible is the mission layout and indeed the character selection. So starting with missions, the map will slowly update as you go about completing your first assignments, which you collect back at base, which is complete with a bar no less. The missions might include protecting a massive drill as it gets to a location or collecting a load of alien eggs or simply mining material. My favorite mission though is hooking up a mining pod where your team has to dig their way through rock Andy Dufresne style, connecting tentacle pipes to a desired location that you can then grind your way about the map on. And going back to that wonderful community, everyone, they just take turns to build these pipes rather than what you see in most other games, which is, I can't be asked, I'm just gonna sit here like a muppet and I'm gonna snipe some twats. 
And each of these missions will be in particular biomes, keeping things fresh. But the most freshest part of all is the procedurally generated maps. Yes, people, it's never actually the same on each playthrough. You never quite know where things are in these caves, with darkness appearing in every corner as you desperately use your scanner to see where those little alien eggs might be buried, all whilst fending off a shitload of alien scum. Each game you play, you just want to play one more, because the community is a dream to play with. And this is where Reggie must call out the developers here, Ghost Ship Games. Now they could go down a path of releasing DLC with more maps, mission types and whatnot, but they chose not to. All that stuff is free. The only thing they've released is cosmetics, which is totally a player choice and one every gaming model should follow. So impressed was I, I actually decided to buy some DLC off them, just as a matter of principle. All credit to you boys. Now the character selection is simple, yes, where you have a choice of an engineer, a driller, a scout or a gunner, everyone gets weapons to play with, but also they've got specialities too. I myself like to be a little engineer, which means I get to be a proper pussy and hide behind my turrets, but I also get a gun that shoots platforms out so I can scale walls. And each class is easy to master, because you haven't got a ton of things That's to keep well your mind, spent. but you start to learn your class inside out and understand its uniqueness and how that can help your team. And in all of this, I haven't even mentioned the perks system to help increase the strength of your chosen character and indeed the abilities of your weapons. If Reggie had to give one criticism here, I would say the game perhaps feels a little bit easy. I've just explained how I keep dying, so maybe this is more down to my little excellent dwarfs that are on my team and I just got lucky with them, but never did I actually see my team get wiped out like I have done in other games such as this, you know, Left for Dead, Back for Blood, etc. Now, I won't say it's not challenging because it is, but I will say it's not difficult either. Now, the alien bugs do come at you thick and fast, that's what she said, and at times you will get overwhelmed. And the beauty is they come at you from a full 360 degrees, scouring ceilings and walls and scuttering around in a panic as if R. Kelly has just entered the cave with them. The variety of the bugs I did find a little bit samey, so some new variations I think would be good. But honestly, gang, I am nitpicking here. The best part of the mission does involve our little alien critters, and that is the mad dash back to your pod within usually a five minute timer as your team battles hordes of the little buggers. And it's one of those panic inducing thrills in gaming that just continues to delight me. So let's talk graphics here, and for me, it's a great example of never judge a book by its cover, unless of course it's got Jimmy Savile on it. Because if you are unsure and dismissing this as a kid type game based on a cartoony look, then think again. The developers made a choice here to ensure it ran easily on all machines, and it really is very well optimized, where the more basic approach to graphics actually is a positive, leaving plenty of headroom on Johnny's 3080 that he snuck to me that time. Now I criticize many games for their janky approach to animations and looks, but not here, they look a bit blocky, yes, but it works perfectly for a game where your main action is breaking down the walls, capital riot style, and more so the animations are a delight as your mates shout rock and stone and raise their arms in victory as dwarfs scramble up rocks or alien bugs crawl at you in their swarms. It's fast paced and beautiful. Now the lighting in a game about cave digging is key and it smashed it out the park here. Each player gets a limited number of flares that replenish over time to help light up the dark and it's needed because without them you can easily get lost like little tie boys in a cave. The way the life bounces off the walls or how you drop a flare to test how big a drop something is, watching the light itself fill the place is great stuff. Now it lacks graphical effects in general. You aren't gonna see many transparent structures or reflections here, but this is all done in mind to keep systems running across a multitude of different system specs. One final point on the optimization is the net code. It's a fast paced game people with a lot of little things being thrown about, such as flares or the breaking up of rocks, throwing a ton of bugs and four players shooting their way out. And you'd expect the net code to just slip up a little bit like Biden did on his bike that day, <laughs> but it doesn't people. The net code is absolutely wonderful and when you die, you know it's because it was you that f***ed up. 
Sound is another little aspect I just want to quickly touch upon. The boom of a shotgun filling the air or the creepy crawly sounds of bugs leaving their mark. And with headphones on, it really is a little bit unnerving. I myself love the little touches in particular, the sound of the flares as they continuously Help bounce off the this. walls or how your little pickaxe chinks against the rock. Ambient sounds are a big hit here and they deliver so much immersion to the overall look and feel of the place. The voice acting is also superb with the dwarves all shouting each other words of encouragement or your mission controller coming in with updates on how it's all going. Finally you have the soundtrack, a rip roaring beat as shit hits the fan or indeed a lovely little quiet calmness before the storm as you're scouting the cave. It's simple stuff but it's executed all so well. Now Reggie just spent $10 on this game in the Steam Summer Sale and it wasn't my intention to do this particular video review now but I felt I had to do so so you could all grab a deal and a bloody half. Let me tell you something, if you had to pay full price for this game it's worth every single bloody penny and it's going to give you countless hours of fun. It's got a developer that understands its audience, it doesn't do shitty practices, it has a healthy group of players who love and adore the dwarf culture and you have a gameplay mechanic that is full of surprises and excitement at every corner and I say it again to you potential doubters Reggie doesn't give scores like this out easy and so I implore you to not just buy that overpriced shitty warm beer for just one night and instead put it towards this because trust me it's all about the rock and stone and with that love you all lots Reggie out